All right, so we go first. We do. We already have the problem of tap land in our opening hand. I'm really not sure that four Rockfall Veil is correct again because it's a tap land. We still have 14, uh, really 18 untapped lands on the first couple of turns of the game. It should be enough. That's precisely what I was worried about. Too many tap lands in the early turns. Opponent goes with Shivan Reef. Swift Spear. Oh boy. So let's try Gala Greeters and see if they blaze a shock on their turn. Play with fire, wisely used. We didn't draw the third land, so I think we probably played correctly. At this point, I think we Lone Speaker. Maybe if I just go double Stalker, that'll let a little set us well up for next turn. Problem is, if you go double Stalker like this, you, it means you want to attack next turn, and I don't know if we'll be in the position to do that. Iconoclast for something. Ancestral Anger, nice, okay. 3-3 three, three Swift Spear and a dude. Here they come, no blocks. So we get a 14. We still haven't drawn the third mana, which is just yikes a little bit. I think we can all agree that that's kind of a giant yikes. Let's trade a token for a stalker here. And say go. Balmore. Ugh. Oof. And removal? Yeah, second play with fire for the beast caller. We're done. Apparently that's not the matchup that we want. We go first. This is much better looking, I think. Yeah, let's just play second stalker. Opponent started on black mana. Red source, blood tithe harvester for opponent. Green source, we never got the uh, the red mana for iconoclast, kinda sucks. But we did get fifth green source for defiler. And that's pretty sick. So let's swing four into this harvester, see if we get a trade out of the deal. We don't, they get a 14. We draw a creature this turn. It shouldn't be too hard to do, but we'll see. Fable of the mirror breaker. Uh, best turn 2-3 play line and standard there. And then they sack their Harvester to get rid of our Iconoclast. We draw a land. Wow! Shieldred. Game over. Let's Defiler. Test their uh, ability to have two mana removal here. Do anything. Wow. Invoke Despair. Sack a creature. They draw two. Let's leave Crown Visionary. This kind of sucks that they have Shieldred in play. Because, you know, I'd really like to draw these cards and I think we still will. In the case of this one here. Pay the green. We draw a land. Oh my goodness. They do have the two mana removal. They defiler. They infernal grasp a defiler. That's all it takes. They win. Um, now we have to consider what we're doing in this game. We're going to go first. We're on the same it's the same problem that we had um in the first game. Where the the tapped lands in the deck come back to bite us. Teething Wormlet turn one. It's gonna be another deck that just wants to get on board, you know. Let's Beast Caller now. We're playing Elves in twice tonight. We've had to play Tap Land on one, and as a consequence, our opponent gets out on the board uh, in front of us on turn one, even though we win first. And that could really mean a lot here as they grow their Wormlet. Here comes Kirion Beast Caller. So they did the same thing we did. We draw an untapped land. That is sick. It's really good. So let's Beast Caller. And then let's uh, throw down Stalker. And now we're starting to get on board. Swing in with this boy. They'll probably take four. Yeah, they do. This is either going to end quickly because one of us gets out in front fast, or it's going to take forever. So, we'll see. See what McCloud does here. Simeon Simulacrum. That's a good card. So here comes Teething Wormlet, probably. Yeah, and we'll just trade doing four to each other. Not bad. We draw Gala Greeters. That's not bad either. So let's play that. Could help us win a life race, perhaps? Could also just grow. I mean, let's play another Stalker. Now, what do we actually do with the Greeters is the problem. We don't really need the treasure, so it's either the counter or the life. We don't need the life just yet, so I think it's the counter. Swing in with all the boys. So the Simulacrum blocks the Beast Collar. They might be able to just unearth it next turn, but they go to nine. All right, so they tail swipe the Greeters. Okay, so maybe they know that we're going to get into a life thing this turn, or this game. Another tail swipe, wow! <laughs> Jeez, okay, so they tail swipe our Beast Caller with their Beast Caller. They put a bunch of counters on Wormlet. This may deter them from attacking this turn, so they don't want to trade with a Stalker. Oh, they won't, okay. They use a timeout, but then they move to combat and don't do anything, okay. So we draw land, that's not bad. It's a lone speaker. 
Trigger Beast Caller. What do you have over there that's instant speed? Is it Tamiyo Safekeeping, perhaps? I bet it's a Tamiyo Safekeeping. And they scoop as we get another trigger on the stack. Okay, so all we have to do is play against a deck that is a lot like our deck. <laughs> and go first. Uh, opponent goes first for the first time tonight, but we still have a decent curve. Sentinel Stalwart, I think is a good turn one here. Opponent's on blue-white over there, so get ready for Make Disappear. Ooh, a Leaf Crown Visionary. But if they have the counter, they're going to use it on the two-drop regardless. So we bait the counter with the one-drop first. That way, if they do play Make Disappear, we get to keep our two-drop. If they don't, if they do play Make Disappear, though, um, on our two-drop, then at least we got this other one-drop creature on the table. We otherwise wouldn't have been able to do that. Let's try this. <laughs> Roping on turn two, trying to play around counter spells. Now if they, okay, so Urtai's Scorn is what they go for here. It is the second spell we played that turn, so they get to play Urtai's Scorn, that's neat. Uh, there's a play line that says, you know, you want to be as aggressive as possible, play the Leaf Crown this turn and deal four to them, five really. But I actually don't think that's correct. It's not like we can outdraw them. They syncopate the Greeters. That's all I really want to do this turn. Let's put him in 19. I just don't, I don't think that Elves can, can ever win the blue-white matchup. So let's leave Crown Visionary under Make Disappear. They've already spent two counter spells this game, so... Hopefully... Although, I feel like if they'd have had Make Disappear, they would have used it. Instead of the Urtai Scorn. Wandering Emperor. I thought it might be an Emperor. <laughs> I thought it might be an Emperor. So they go with Exile. The, uh, Stalker. They have Removal. It's a march for our Anthem effect. That's terrible. Reckoner Bank Buster. Down to one card, but they do have a Bank Buster. We, of course, draw Lannister. I hope that's it, but I doubt that's it. Hey, can I only do this on my turn? Activate only as a sorcery. <laughs> I guess I've learned. Um, I guess we need a Loan Speaker. They have removal for the Beast Caller as well. That's hilarious. One card left in their hand. We are still playing this game, for some reason. <laughs> Teferi. Wow. Okay. Well. That's the ball game, I would say. Yikes. Alright, so let's try again here. Let's control for you. You know, they always have it. So we go first here, and curve looks okay. Stalwart. So let's leave Crown Visionary. I was actually thinking about not attack. I was thinking about bushwhacking. We need the mana for the Defiler. So they played Tapped Land, Rafine's Tower, to be exact. Ho ho ho! Look at that. It was going to make me tap my Stalwart instead of paying a, a, a you know. That's ridiculous. Alright, so. Do I want to draw the card, though? One, two, three. Let's just do damage. Let's just do as much damage as we can. Put them at 10 on our turn 3 before they drop their third land. So they Graveyard Trespasser, nothing to eat. Lana War Stalker is our draw. Well, let's bang in. See if they take the trade with the Iconoclast. They do. Let's pay the green. Draw the card for the uh, Stalker. Let's play this land, but let's go ahead and... Well, do I want to bushwhack? I kind of do. I kind of want to draw this card. Or draw this land, play it next turn. And that way we can drop Defiler and still attack with uh, Stalwart and stuff. If we have our dudes out. No, just another Trespasser. They can eat this time, though. So, we go to 18, they go to 7. They got one mana left over there. What's Defiler? Again, that's... Sounds really terrible. Um, so, Long War Stalker is going to get a 1-up here. They're going to cut it down. Okay, that was the last card. The last card they had mana for, rather. Let's use both Stalwart, that ability, and um, Defiler's ability to cast a Long War Loam Speaker. That way we get counters on all of our dudes and we get another guy. I think that's just better. I don't think they're going to sweep here. But, you know, could be really wrong. But if they try to, like, drag to the bottom, I mean, they don't kill our dudes with that. Gets his command. Okay, wow, that's really good. They, they they kill all of our small guys, basically, and also our biggest guy, so that's amazing. Good job. <laughs> really good job. <laughs> Why did we draw a land there, dude? Why did we draw a land there? 
I'm swinging. They go to six. It's nighttime, too. There's nothing we can do about that. Why did we draw a land there, dude? Why did that just happen? Another third trespasser of the game. Wow. Okay. Okay. Cheesy, crazy. Macaroni and cheesy, dude. We go to five. Let's see if we uh, draw something this turn. Hey, it's a defiler. Oh, and they, of course, they have the removal for it. Nice. Okay. Jeez, man. That was a that was a brutal one. All right, we go first. No two drop for the stalwart to play around with. I think I'm keeping it though, because I fell into the old trap. We've talked about this extensively on stream before. I actually released a a, fair, a video that got a lot of views and was fairly controversial. It had a lot of comments where um you know I asked the question, which is the better hand? Uh, basically, a hand with a bunch of lands in it and like two cards, or a hand we didn't we drew a land by the way. Um, or a hand, this this further cements my point. This further cements my point. So a hand with a bunch of lands and like two regular cards. Or a hand with one land and like six normal cards. Which more what's more keepable? We drew another land, by the way. Holy crap. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what is happening? But again, this, this, this right here cements my point. Because the correct answer to this question is you mulligan away the hand with all the lands in it. The hand with all the lands in it is a much worse land, a hand than a one lander, like every day, because you you fall into this trap where you think to yourself, well, I have five or six lands in my hand, right? So what are the chances of drawing another land? Extremely high. You, it's actually much better to keep, you know, hands with like one land, because <laughs> the card you're, the thing you're most likely to draw is land throughout the entire game. You're most likely to draw land, because you know you run it at a thirty percent or thirty five percent. Uh, right, but if you keep a hand, if you keep a hand with four lands in the opening hand, just like I just did just then, you have this thought process like, I mean, what are the chances? You know, the chances are extremely high, extremely high. Good game, our opponent. Because <laughs> I mean, what, what did they just? They upped just now. Let's drop the rockfall veil. Liliana, get out of the way so I can see your loyalty too. Okay, yeah. So we lose. We play Defiler here, and they just. Make a sack it. Well, maybe they don't. Maybe they can't do that. Maybe they can. Let's try this. Let's bushwhack. Kill the trespasser. Yes, I'm sure. That or else I wouldn't have done that. Discard the other bushwhack. Let's try this. Am I on 24? Yeah, I'm on 24 lands. Which I don't necessarily think is... Yep, they have they had it. Removal, make a sack the other... But now they don't have to really make a sack the other thing. We'll see. They draw. They may just not do anything with Liliana. Each player discards. Why would you do that? We don't have any cards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So we use the Loam Speaker. Let's kill this Liliana, first and foremost. It's so, like, the games tonight keep making me think we have a chance. <laughs> it's probably not true, though. Luck favors the We're top decking, they have a bank buster. It's not really a great sitch, you know? The <laughs> Wandering Emperor. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. The problem, however, is that we play um, Defiler of Vigor, and I'd really like to actually get to that card. Well, that's not terrible. That's right? I mean, that's not bad. We got to kill their Emperor. We got another Loam Speaker. We got to draw a card. Played Argoth. They have a Trespasser. Damn it. That <laughs> sucks. I assume they let this land through. But they may want to hit us with the land destruction, you know. We'll see if it's tempting, but I don't think it will be tempting enough. They'll just go to 19. You know? So we make boy. Now that we know we absolutely must do it on our turn. Mill three. Those were not the best cards in the world to mill. <laughs> Besage you, Leaf Crown. And a uh, Sentinel Stalwart. Cut down the Visionary, yeah. I assume maybe that was their draw, because they would have played that if they had it. We draw yet another land. Uh-huh. Another Bank Buster. Goodness gracious. We had um, two turns to get card advantage off the uh, Leaf Crown Visionary or whatever it's called, but didn't get it. They drew their cut down first. We just drew lands. They offer us a trade... It would appear. 
Yep, yeah, I'm taking the double block here. Let's see if they emperor. They have an emperor. They have an emperor. That's what this is. That's what this is. Just take the four because the game is more or less out of hand at this point anyway. They have. T yep, we draw another land. You guys see this, right? Keep drawing the lands. Let's tip our um, glass here. Then we have now drawn lands, I believe, four turns in a row. So we're just not destined to win this one, I guess. Opponent goes first. This is a keepable curve. <laughs> Damn, bro, you suck at drawing cards. Yeah, I know. You can ask um, anyone else who's been here for a while. It's it's. I'm, I've always been pretty bad at drawing cards. Let's uh, loam speaker. Well, I think we actually get me on beast caller this turn, don't we? Let's go ahead and grow this beast caller. Play another stalwart. Beast caller goes out of. Play with fire range. Still in lightning strike range. Here comes Squee. Nice. Okay. It's getting in damage. That's fine. No blocks for now. Kind of sucks. <laughs> we got a 14. Loam speaker number one. Loam speaker number two. 5-5 five, five beast caller, huh? So we can put them at 15. Have a modicum of defense for the coming up turn. Let's give it a shot. We can always double block squeeze with uh, loam speakers. But maybe this turn they play Halana and Elena and just rock us. That could be a problem. <laughs> it's Halana and Elena. How do we know? 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 Such an easy game. All right, so... Four, five, we go to nine. Crap. It's pretty low. It's pretty low. They had exactly Halana and Elena. We draw land. Jeez. So let's add a blue. Let's see if we draw um, three lands here with Inspired Idea. <laughs> Close. Lone Speaker. Get a counter on Beast Caller. I actually think I'm going to tap the Stalwarts to cast the Bushwhack. Beast Caller fights Halana and Elena all day. Crash into them. I think it's Dave Matthews band. And then you don't untap the creature, do you? No, we don't. Or untap the land round. This attacking here or not actually makes a huge difference. They'll just block with the token, though. I don't know. I'm going to do it for science. I'm swinging. I probably shouldn't do this. But we knew they'd just take this one little block here. That's fine. <gasps> Changes everything if they don't block. They take it. Simeon Simulacrum. Pretty good. Yeah, put the counters on the chick. That's what you do. Swing, swing. Four, five, six, seven, eight in the air coming our way. We have 15, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, four, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hmm. I guess if we don't block, then like a play with fire kills us. So we should probably block. They do nothing else. Doesn't look like they have anything else. So. We are at six. What happens if we take the offensive this turn? Let's try it. All right, here comes a land. Here comes a land. Swing with land, swing with land. Now the question is Beast Caller? Yes. Of course, they do block. That puts the Simulacrum in the yard. So then Phoenix Chick can deal five damage to this. We, we have to keep that in mind. But they have that. They have that. We have to try to attack through this one way or the other. You just have to. Put them at nine. They really only have to either kill us this turn or survive one more turn. Let's see if they can do it this turn. All it really takes is a burn spell. Because you unearth the Simeon Simulacrum. Oh, this is also a way to do it. Wow. Wow. Why did it take them a minute to think of to do that? <laughs> it's like obviously the play. <laughs> they have an Ulvenwald oddity of all things. Uh, I guess I could have seen that coming. But I didn't. I thought that they were instead going to have like burn spell or something. But they had Halana and Elena, so I guess I should expect four drops. Opponent goes first. Never what we want to see. It's a blue-black land. Let's stalk. Uh, yes, yes. Let's do that. We draw land. Let's let's carry on, Beast Caller. Carry on my way, who went on. You'll get make disappeared right now. They're looking at the stalker. Are they mar really? Okay, so if they march the stalker to not take damage this turn, it means they also have a removal spell for this, I assume. But I think that we try to maximize value. 
Here comes the removal spell for Beast Caller. I couldn't have telegraphed it anymore. He really just didn't want to take two damage that badly. Yeah, another march. Awesome. There's too much removal, dude. There's just way too much removal in standard. Like, too much good removal that everyone plays. <laughs> Safari. He's going to slow the sunset. Can't kill the Teferi this turn. That's amazing, dude. Teferi's a beast, isn't he? We cannot kill that Teferi this turn. Set him down to one, though, and I think that's what I want to do, but... You know, opponent's going to... Is it 21 and just get their, get their fifth land this turn? Just, how do we win, you know? They do nothing but gain life. Okay. They also, however, did not, um... Didn't play sweep, which I'm a little surprised by. So, let's just try to kill the Teferi and maximize damage. They have Wandering Emperor, and we we just know that to be the case. It's it's an absolute truth. Six lands out of the first 12 cards. That's always fun. This way they Wandering Emperor. Oh, they Fateful Absence. Okay. They do kill a land, though. They couldn't resist killing a land. Even though their Teferi dies regardless. Bigger they would have killed the Greeters. Oh, well. Let's uh, activate this ability on this clue token and draw some cards. Defiler, okay. Okay. Kyrion Beast Caller. Alright. Yeah, I'll cast the Beast Caller. I've been waffling, sort of, on whether or not I wanted to do that. Let's put a counter on the greeters. Let's just try a big attack step. Again, Emperor. I'm scared of Emperor here. No, they have Destroy Evil. Okay. They could still have Emperor. Absolutely could. No, they just have, okay, Atara. All right. Now they're out of cards. They're out of cards, man. Interesting that you're out of cards. They do nothing, so they have one card in their hand. I'm going to blow the treasure real quick. <laughs> that way we have a land to swing with. Let's defile her. Right? Wanted the counter on Beast Caller. First and foremost. Like before the attack step. Oh my goodness, okay. Land. Let's see what this is. Nothing. They have nothing. So they go to seven. They need to draw sweep this very moment, and they don't. Okay, wow. Wow. Okay. So, this is the way that Elves typically does beat control when it does beat control, is that control doesn't draw the sweeper. They just don't do it. And we run them out of removal because we have so many dudes. We just have so many dudes that if they do want to play removal spells, they got five. Five removal spells that game. It's all they played was removal into Teferi. On his question, why don't you play best of three matches instead of best of one? We can see more intense matches and strategy with sideboards can widely increase win, win rates. Yeah, I know. Though you can wildly increase uh, win rates in best of three uh, with good sideboard play and such. But uh, we only stream for like two or two and a half hours or something like that. And I like to get in as many... I've explained this a whole bunch of times, but I know you weren't here that time. Or those times. But I like to get in as many games as possible with a deck that is very uh, a very new concept that I haven't played a lot of games with. Sort of an experimental, theoretical, kind of weird, janky thing. Um, and I, I don't want to only get in like four matches all night. You know, I like to get in like 10, 15, 20 games as proof of concept. And I think best of one's the cleanest way to do that. But we go first. Let's see what's going on here. Pretty decent opening curve, I think. Stalker. Swing three before our opponent gets their second land. Hopefully, maybe they just cut it down. <laughs> Let's see. Now they start on planes. Recruitment officer. Okay. Let's see if we can get a trade out of it. Carplusin Forest. Leaf Crown Visionary. Ouch. You wanna do it? Yep, they make the trade. Would love to draw a land this turn. That'd be great. Thalia, we don't have to worry too much about that. We didn't draw the land. Instead, instead we drew one of the very few non-creatures, or yeah, non-creature spells in the deck. Because they just played Thalia, which of course triggered this. <laughs> triggered drawing inspired idea. <laughs> That's great. Alright, so let's pay for it and play the other Leaf Crown Visionary. And no attacks, because they're both still 2-2s, and Thalia's got first strike. Nope, Brutal Cathar, we all could have predicted that. They take a Visionary. <laughs> Modern War Loam Speaker. Should have played Stalwart first. 
Sure. Sure. <laughs> There's another land. That's fine. They're gonna have a hard time swinging into this unless they have another Brutal Cathar, which, you know, they, <laughs> they often do. No, it's a Valiant Veteran. Okay. You got another one? He, of course you do! <laughs> no blocks. That's amazing, dude. Oh, man. Let's Sentinel Stalwart. That's great. That's so great. Oh, it's just amazing. We draw Gala Greeters. That's nice, huh? Hmm, hmm, hmm. What the other visionary, though? <laughs> it's seriously... It tapped. It t hey, here's a lesson we've all learned from this game. It'll tap your mana dude instead of your pain land. It'll tap your blocker instead of your pain land, thus dealing four damage to you in this case, rather than the one damage you would have taken otherwise. Holy crap. <laughs> That's... Wow. Why did you do that, game? Here's Faithbound Judge. You don't see that every day. You really don't. They swing away. Here comes everything, kids. Maybe not the Cathar. Yep, yep. This is the correct thing to swing with everything. This is the absolutely the right play. And we still take seven and lose. We, we, I mean, we have to just lose all of our guys. So, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. What do I do in response to Depopulate? King Poor, P99. We talked about this at the very beginning during the deck tech. Uh, Elves just dies to Depopulate. It just takes the loss to Depopulate. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> um, you try to beat them before they get to it, like we did in the other game against Blue-White just like two games ago. But yeah, Blue Elves has always folded to Sweeper. You just take those losses, and you beat the decks that you can beat. So, that's, you know, paper, rock, scissors, magic, baby. We go first. I guess we start on Argoth. It's a good thing we don't have any other one drops. Starts on um, the cool uh, mountain from Crimson Val or whatever. Midnight Hunt. It's Midnight Hunt one. Let's go Gala Greeters. Right? I think I would rather it die right now than the uh, Leaf Crown Visionary. So they don't have Play with Fire. Red White is the case that they gave me. Spirited Companion. Maybe it's that um, uh, Reanimator deck or the Angels deck. One or the other. I'm going to kick the Iconoclast. Counter on Greeters. Swing for a million before they play their third land. Let's just try to get out in front. But that actually hasn't been like the best strategy in the world for us tonight. They may not block, they don't. I go to 14, save the block for a better day. Bitter Reunion, oh! Are you doing the uh, 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 Brilliant Restoration deck? I hope you are. They drop a uh, Borrowed Time in the Yard. They're, they're playing Brilliant Restoration, dude. Them dropping a Borrowed Time also makes me think they have a Borrowed Time. So that's interesting. Let's Visionary Stalwart draw a card. Alright, Visionary, we draw the card. It's a Defiler, that's great. It's really good. Treasure? Yeah, maybe. We don't need life. Treasure's just better. And let's swing. Now they'll take the block, I assume, on the Greeters. Yeah. They want the companion in their yard anyway. In this case, a borrowed time hurts a little bit. Instead, they play Bitter Reunion. Maybe they don't have another land yet. Yeah, they drop a Fable. They know how bad that card is this turn. Alright, so they find a land. Sundown Pass. Circle of Confinement. The Visionary, perhaps? They take the Iconoclast? Why'd you do that? Huh. Yeah, I think maybe they see they took the wrong thing. They want the Greeters or the uh, Visionary. Either one is fine there. Um, but still, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 when we play a creature because Greeters get to counter. They go to 2. They have another turn here. They could have another turn here. That ain't bad. Let's go. Stalwart, Greeters, Iconoclast. If we get a 1-drop... In the next two turns, we play it um, on top of Stalwart Greeters. That's honestly, that's the best line in this deck, isn't it? 
Stalwart into Gala Greeters or Kyrion Beast Caller, and then play a one drop with the two of those. That's a really good line. Let's play her. Why not? Nothing yet. Yep, they have cut down for the Beast Caller. So we put him in 18 with the swing, we say go. The suspense. Does the opponent have third land? They do. It's an island. And it's an expensive island, too. Rafine comes down. Whoa! Another card. It's kind of the exact kind of thing that I meant when I said, you know, creatures that just sit on the board don't have to attack. They just they just have ridiculous value they create. Rafine is textbook example of that, so. Kind of a yikes. Beast Caller into Greeters. Sure. It just helps that we can get both of them on the table on the same turn, but... Oh, I think Rafine coming down is a bit of a problem. Oh, they swing. Okay. But did they swung? Alright, so they draw. If they don't do anything this turn, then we have to fear Wandering Emperor. Which I think we should, but, um... Okay, so they discard, um, Tenacious Underdog. Put a counter on the Rafine. We go to 18, and they... Infernal Grasp the Beast Caller. Okay. Let's put a counter on the Greeters. Underdog comes down. Just a normal underdog. Oh my god! Why would you kick it that way? What are you doing? Oh my god, I forgot. I didn't I didn't learn. 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 Oh Devin. Oh, Tapped my two guys instead of the Bane Land to kick the Iconoclast. Why? Why in the world? Uh, I was going to put a counter on Greeters and swing with Greeters in the Iconoclast. They trade with the Underdog with something, but we still get damage in, you know? But but no. Jeez Louise, man. Holy mackerel. That's, 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 that's cheapery. That's true cheapery. Man. Yeah, pain lands are messing with the auto tapper a lot. It's twice tonight. Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, if you're seeing this. We can take a... We put the lands in our deck because we're okay taking a point of damage to get mana. That's why we put them there. <laughs> they play Shieldred, so we draw Inspired Idea. <laughs> the jokes, man. The jokes just keep on coming. You gotta love them. You gotta love the jokes, Arena has. <laughs> Help. All right, so... We're back to the tapped land. This is the fourth time tonight. So I just want to point that out. We are, we are at the fourth time tonight that we have a tapped land in our hand on turn one. And we go first. And that screws up a turn two play and also a turn one play. So we have got we have got to take Rockfall Veil out this deck. It has got to come up out this deck. Like immediately. <laughs> well, I'd rather actually bait them with a lone speaker this turn. <laughs> See if they cut that down. Swamp number two. Yep. <laughs> Cut down. That might be when they have extra, though. It's Beast Caller. Stalker. Test their ability to have cut down right now. They do, though. Something's hanging. It has to be cut down. That's incredible. That's inc... <laughs> okay. Say go. Chimney Cricket, dude. Becomes Jadar. Alright. I keep hearing screams of pain from Dev. <laughs> yeah, we're they're they're really they're they're giving it to us tonight, man. They really are. Giving us the business. That's all I can really say. Gala greeters. Children. <sighs> How many times do you have to play against that card in one night, dude? Ban children, seriously. Usually this is where I would say like, well, I don't really mean ban it because I don't do but do but no, like ban ban children. Good game. So what do we keep losing to tonight? We keep losing to Shieldred. Actually, I think Shieldred's what we've lost three games to. Opponent goes first. Okay. Again, we never want to see this. <laughs> we never want to see this. Blue mana. I'm going to bushwhack. Here comes Delver. Well, hmm. Well, we'll resolve Greeters, but it may never grow. <laughs> Is the problem. Guess we'll see. Say go, see if they flip their Dell. 
consider that'll help. That will help. If they didn't want the Fading Hope, that means they have one. Fading Hope would have flipped your Delver. Now you don't get to flip your Delver. Look what you did. Why didn't you want another Fading Hope? They play Delver. They have to already have a Fading Hope. They absolutely must already have one. That is actually quite tough. I'm going to play Greeters this turn. Just obviously the more important thing to resolve, you know. Counter on Greeters. Do we see if they want to trade both of their Delvers? Okay, slip out the back. So we got one of them out of their hand. That's good. But if they flip their Delvers, they're gonna, yep, they're going to start doing a lot of damage. It's a Spell Pierce, too. We don't have to worry too much about Spell Pierce, but we do have to worry about seven in the air every turn, you know? And Tolerian Terror, you can play that for two already? You can already play this card for two. Holy crap, wow. Well, I mean, consider that Fading Hope into your yard. I called you silly for it at the time, but it ended up being like the best thing you could have done. Hmm, we lose to Delver in the air. We just lose to it. Ain't nothing we're doing about that, boys. Nothing we're doing about that. Counters around. Visionary. Two life. Two life. Here comes a third Delver of Secrets. A third Delver. A third one. Twelve. We go to five. So we can go back up to nine. Then we die to Delver's next turn if they flip the other one. So I kind of feel like we do have to block a little. All right. So we go to ten. They are at 20. Leaf Crown Visionary procs off the Yavimaya. Or the, the Leaf Crown Visionary procs off. Yeah, Yavimaya Iconoclast. Yeah, I'll draw. It's a Besaju. Counter. Counter. So we're playing another creature this turn. We won't draw the card, will we? Well, will we? Can we play this Besaju? No. Okay. We do take a damage, but that's fine. We're about to gain four. Well, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe it's not perfectly okay. No, it is. It is. It's fine. This is fine. Fading hope. Sure up. Oh, because it untaps. Why does it untap the thing? Oh, why does it untap the creature? Why does it do that? That's too much. <laughs> All right, so Spell Pierce, they play Island. Spell Pierce is the other card in the hand. They Thirst, they have one card left, or one mana left. But if they, they have plenty of things they can draw. All right, so here comes not everything. Yes. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We don't die to this. Do block the Telerian Terror. We go to 7, and we die next turn anyway. Right? So what what is the purpose of blocking the Telerian Terror? Because it's not like they have play with fire on blue mana, you know? Okay, so play the Besage you, right? There's not. This doesn't do anything. Just making sure. Ah, oh, we can't pay two life to play the Lone Speaker after the Defiler. We can't do that. It sucks. Well, maybe we can, actually. We can. We can. Yes, we can. Because we can gain two life off of the Gallagher's. So let's do that. And then... Tap you for green. Do this. Auto pay. I, I don't have the green this time. I mean, I do technically, but I don't really. Uh, counter on greeters and swing. Eh... Doesn't really do well. Five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, they go to one. Oh, good game, opponent. Good game. Finish it one and two, respectively. Great game of magic cards, dude. That really was. Good job, Coheed Jr. Opponent goes. Getting a lot of that lately. We really, really, really go going first is kind of one of the most important things to this kind of deck. Style work. Turn one. Opponent is on Sundown Pass. Beast Caller. Make Disappear. Have not seen a single Make Disappear tonight. 
Not yet. <laughs> We've seen a bunch of counter spells. We've gotten a lot of spells countered. We just haven't. Not that I can remember. I haven't seen him make disappear. Let's try and kick this bad boy in. Don't do it again. Do not do that. <laughs> he was seriously going to tap down the Stalwart. <laughs> and the Beast Caller. God. Alright, so they fires of victory the Beast Caller. No counters. They're going to take five this turn. So they go to 14. And this turn they just have Wandering Emperor mana up. Yep, look at what they're doing. I wonder if that's what's going on. <laughs> I'll take damage, Arena. Don't worry, I'll take damage. Let's leave Crown Visionary. See if they counter it. If they do, we get a decent attack in. They didn't, though. Let's draw the card off this Stalker. I think I'm walking into a Wandering Emperor, but I do kind of want it out of their hand. I do want that. Yep. There's a memory deluge. <gasps> Ooh, so here they might just find sweep. Uh, I will say if they find sweep, we're not in the absolute worst position. We need more mana, but eh, you know. double spell next turn or just kick in an iconoclast, which it looks like is what we might do. <gasps> we have another one. Yes, I know we take damage. I think we just took two when we only had to take one, because for some reason the auto tapper is really weird. Union! Oh, that's such a good card, dude. They go up to nine. But they don't have Emperor mana. That's good. I'm really curious about this. Okay, so green mana, colorless mana, red mana. One damage is all we have to take to kick this card. Another one? Union of the Third Path puts them at 13. Yikes. Okay. We put them at 6, uh, so they're, they're still staring down the barrel here, but they've drawn a lot of cards the last couple of turns. They get to Impulse here with Depopulate Mana up. So, not out of the woods. 5 mana, they didn't do anything, but if they don't have an Emperor by now, I am extremely surprised. No, just like normal removal spell. Okay, a Braid. They get hit, so they go to three, and now we have a real decision to make. Do we put things onto the table? Lana War Stalker first. I'm gonna bushwhack and search my library for a land. They negate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Wonder how long you've had that in your hand. All right, memory deluge for all the mana, so they lose. They lose unless they drop a mana in Fading Hope. That's their only chance here. And even then, if we get an untapped land, they still die even if they have Fading Hope, so. Yeah, that's it. All right, so we've actually beaten Control two out of three times, and this game we played through to Populate. We go first. This hand is not good. It's a very, very terrible hand. Let's throw back one of these tap lands because the game is dead set on making us draw tap lands. I've already said it three times, but if you're going to try to build elves and you want an Iconoclast in the deck, do not play Rockball Veil. This was a bad, this was a bad include. Real bad. Alright. Let's Beast Caller. Opponent has played Kumano after Sulphurus Springs, so I assume they have uh, Play With Fire. <laughs> but who knows? Oh yeah, Cut Down. That's the other one. They always have Cut Down, too. Look at this, too, like... We have three cards in our hand. Opponent has five. <laughs> like, how does that happen? <laughs> it happens like every game, too. It's ridiculous. No blocks. Mono red doing mono red things over there. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods here because, um, honestly, yeah, just another storm seeker, right? Like, just another storm seeker and, uh, uh removal spell just hurts us pretty badly. Bolt for the uh, Beast Call. It means it doesn't get to distribute its counters, by the way. So we go to 12. We have a Maya Iconoclast again. It keeps trying to give us this card. Not at blocking with you, so I might as well swing. They go to 17. We're at 12. Fifth land. Reckless Storm Seeker. Who would have known? 
Also Kumano. So they go to 16, we go to 11. Here comes the swing. No attacks. Slum Speaker. Pay the green. Try to draw on tap land. We don't. Removal. Yeah, there's obliterating bolt. Jeez. Involves sleeper is the last card in their hand. Of course it did. So we lose. We just lose. Okay, cool. They had the exact hand they needed to kill us. So that's fun. All right. Nice. Nice. Super nice. Super nice. Super nice. I mean, we lose regardless because we just die off Mishra damage as soon as they attack, but Lord, did they have something they could play out there. Is this keepable? Jack the Blue Wizard. Let's see if that's a swerve. They do not play a blue source their turn one. They play a rock ball veil, so maybe it was a swerve. Let's call Quirion Beast Caller. Kirion Beast Caller. Say it right. Next turn, we can slam in this Iconoclast. That's looking good, right? Kimano comes down. Ping us. They just drew this mountain, I assume. Or they just drew the Kimano. They strangle, of course. They strangle. Early removal, dude. <laughs> Everyone's got it all the time. I'm going to Loam Speaker here, and that way we can defile her next turn. I think it's actually better than playing Iconoclast now by hopefully a good bit. Tovalar is the play, so it's Wolves. They got 4-4 four, four Lar, that's not bad. And Defiler. See if they can play through this. Not unheard of. They swing with the Tovalar, we may take it. Pack Song Pup, that's gonna get a counter. Pack Song Pup, it's gonna, wow, okay. X, 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 X. That gets a counter every single turn. Every turn. So red mana, iconoclast. Count on everything. Loam speaker. Counter on everything. Stalwart, pay the life. Counter on everything. Meant to also attack with the slum speaker. <laughs> Crap! It was a misclick. I thought I'd already clicked it. Wow, they take the damage and go to five. Okay. Well, frenzied trap breaker, rather. Comes down. And they don't attack. However, we drew a land. Of course we did. Really needed creatures to keep things going here, but we failed to draw them. Okay, so Bling Blong, Blarn. Yeah, let's swing with these guys. Six, nine, they could triple block it with pups and trap breakers. And that might be what they end up doing. Yep. Oh, no, Tobalar too, huh? Hmm. Well, let's see, let's see how this plays out. All right, so attacks and blocks go through. They go to one, but then go back up to four. Everything exiles, that might matter. If these two guys would have attacked, maybe things would have been different. So their draw was Pack Song Pup, which is pretty insane. <laughs> we draw another land! Why? <laughs> That's. Wow. Five, six, seven out of 13 of our cards have been lands. That's fun. It's a higher than 50% rate. The fun thing about that is that I don't play lands at a higher than 50% rate. Let's uh, get in here. Variants, Schmerians, Puddin' and Pie. Alright, so their pack song dies, so they actually go up to 5? Yeah. Replace the, the land that we lost. Tovalar is their draw! Oh my god. <laughs> and they get to. Come in and draw if they want to. It'd be, it'd be a bad call. <laughs> oh my god! It's trying to get me! It's trying, dude! Three lands in a row, and they've drawn Paxong Pup Tovalar in that same time period. <sighs> Three lands in a row, everybody. Opponent has drawn Creature Creature. One of them was Tovalar. The other one draws a, gains a bunch of life. They've now drawn to, uh, Halana and Elena off the top of their deck. Their last two top decks, uh, with no other cards in their hand, have been Tovalar and Halana and Elena. 
We draw Gallagher Eaters. No other creatures to play. That's that's cool. Whatever. Yeah. We've drawn these two lands in a row, and another land before that. So just ama just amazing. Just amazing. Amazing game of magic cards here, guys. I'm so I'm i I'm so upset at this game. I'm so upset at this game. I gotta say, I try I've been I've been trying to uh you know, just lay back as much as possible these last couple of streams especially. Um, but that game, that game, that game, dude. I can, can I be mad? Can you guys permission to be mad at this one? Hybrid players have the highest satisfaction rates of any player. You go first. Let's see about it. Sometimes it happens. That variance, baby. Right? That's what they call it, right? That's variance. I'm supposed to like that when that happens. It's supposed to make Magic a better game, actually. It's better. It's better when things like that happen. Uh, they have Mishra's Research Desk, turn one. Let's go Kyrion Beast Caller. Swang, let's go. Alright, next turn we double spell, and it looks pretty good if we get to keep both guys out, but we'll see if that happens. Third Path Iconoclast, pretty good card to be playing right now. Pretty good, pretty good. We're not going to be able to pay the green. That sucks. Oh, well. It's the least of our worries right now. Let's just get on board and go fast. Swing for a bunch. Put them at 10 before they play their third land. Let's see if... See if that matters. <laughs> Hasn't been mattering much tonight. I think earlier we put a player at 10 uh, on turn 3. They scoop though. They just don't have it. Honestly, though, I'm, I was nervous, dude. Maybe they didn't draw their third land. Maybe that's what it was. If you don't draw your third land, you might be in trouble. But still, like, if you have Fading Hope for Kyrion Beast Caller, play with Fire for the uh, Leith Crown Visionary, like, you just you can still win this game, like, pretty easily, dude. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Opponent goes first. It's this same mana situation, guys. Sixth time this has happened? Sixth time this has happened that the exact two first lands in our hand are, are Forest Rockfall Veil? Vale. Like, what are you trying to do? Like, well, we have two looks at drawing an untapped land by turn two. Let's hope we get it. But we probably won't. Then, then the turn after that, we'll draw lands for the rest of the game. <laughs> Basically guaranteed. We didn't get it. Of course we didn't get it. We blink. We lose the game. All right, go. I just want a real game of magic, you know? Oh, oh you're going to cut my guy down? So let's try another one in. Let's get another one in. We haven't beaten a Shildred all night. I don't think it's going to happen now either, to be honest. There's the removal spell, because they have three in their opening hand. Cool, 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 cool game. Opponent goes. Um, third time in a row. Playing elves here. I don't know if Arena knows that we're playing elves. Let's get a creature cut down. It should be the greeters, because we have more of those. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you don't have any two mana removal? What does that mean you have? Shildred. Wedding announcement comes down. They have white mana in their deck. Okay, so let's Beast Caller. Let's get this value while we can. Counter on Greeters. Stalwart comes down. We get a treasure. Swing. Early start, but on the early start has been like, it hasn't been worth enough all night. A Kaya Geist Hunter? Nice! All right, so they're going to get two tokens with the wedding announcement. That's all Kai has done here. Okay. So we can play Defiler this turn, but I don't want to. I just want to get in as much damage as possible. And I think that that involves just playing Iconoclast, honestly. I think developing our board is an idea. But I think we just want the big attack. So Beast Caller gets counters. Greeters gets a counter. You have Trample, don't you, Greeters? I think you did. Uh, iconoclast, yes. So that definitely goes to Kaya. These other guys go over here. We don't attack with Stalwart. They take that damage and go to 11. I don't deserve this. They want them boys on the table, don't they? They say go. Wandering Emperor is on the docket. Couldn't be any more obvious. It's Greeters. I don't think we have to worry about sweepers this game, but these tokens decks typically will occasionally play a sweeper or two. Counter on greeters. 
Wandering Emperor is such a ridiculous card, dude. Like, what? It really is. <laughs> it's finally the Emperor. Because look what she does here. Like, she gets rid of this dude and gains them two life. They go up to 13. Now, they just have to trade here and double block here. And, like, that's our entire board state, and they get to keep a Planeswalker and a creature. Like, Wandering Emperor is a ridiculous magic card, dude. It really is. I'm going to do something against my uh, better judgment here. I don't want to uh, get rid of the treasure token. I want the treasure. I do. I do. As a matter of fact, yeah, in the turn. I've been trying to get to, this, to, to these defilers like all game, and I just can't because I'm not drawing lands for once. You play an Edgar. You have an Edgar. I guess it is. It's Mardu tokens. Edgar's good for that. And they make a guy. There goes their emperor. They don't have emperor mana this turn either. But you know, we don't have big guys to swing with. It's probably how they're. Their view of the situation. I will tap guys later, thank you very much. I want to spend treasures now, Arena. Alright, so Defiler. Uh, counter. It's Bushwhack. The Edgar for now. It's going to give him tokens, so now we only have like a small window to win. But hopefully we still can. Defiler puts counters on everything. We play Iconoclast, Treasure Token, so that we might be able to get to the other Defiler next turn. Alright, opponent plays land. Edgar, a second Edgar, good lord. Wow, and the last card in their hand is a Celestis for some reason. Sure. I'm wrong with that. We get a Besage you. Blows up the coffin. It's actually kind of a big deal. Let's just play the second Defiler and make everything enormous. Counter on Greeters. And let's just go. So they block the Yavamai Iconoclast, they'll trade with the 3-3. And they block the 5-5 five, five with the 2-2, two, two, so that all makes sense. They go to 5. No, they get 8. Excuse me. We end the turn. They get a guy off of the Coffin. It's one way to kill a coffin, I guess. Just make them have two of them so that they legend rule. Okay, so they Celestis. Have to drop something. Let's see if they got something better. It's a land. They drop a land. Did we do it? Ooh, we have a choice. I think it's a pretty easy choice, though. Wouldn't you say? Let's throw down the Iconoclast. don't have to take any damage. Oh, no. If that card is uh, an Emperor, then maybe, but I really don't even think that that matters. Iconoclast was probably the best draw for an Emperor, but again, I don't think that Emperor does anything. I'm pretty sure we win here. It is an Emperor, though. So they take out the Defiler. Uh, they block the 7-7. Seven, seven. They go up to 11, and they take 12, so I would call that a good game. Whew! Whew! They, they drew... Oh, they go to one. Oh my goodness. They go to one. Because that guy has lifelink. Their guys have... This dude has lifelink. So here comes Markov. They could game us anyway, but like, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be, dude. You could still pull this off. See if they drew a removal spell. They'll get a blocker off the Emperor. So like, they could game us. But... We'll see. At one way or the other, this is a good game. I mean, they drew something good. They drew Archangel of Wrath? Of all the things they could have drawn to keep him in the game, dude. Holy butts. That is nuts. They drew that. Wow. They're fitting to win, dude. They're fitting to win this game. We draw a land. I'm done for the night. I'm just done for the night. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done.